Sure. So I'm um, just going to uh, share my screen. Um, it's actually quite late here in the UK, so it's uh, half past midnight. So I'm going to take quite a, an easy, casual kind of conversational presentation. But um, the reason uh, really I wanted to talk about the subject is um, this is actually something I feel um, can be a lot better. And it's always something people seem to be asking questions about. So for example, I hear all the time is, OK, how do we make our configuration uh, more usable? What do we do? So um, we could start looking at um, templating, for example. So there's all kinds of examples, like um, Helm, for example, where you can start um, templating configuration files. But the problem I've always found is that you kind of end up with something that's quite brittle um, quite quickly, because um, what you end up is you're actually dealing with um, a lot of string parsing and things. So um, this is where I found first found about JSON it. So um, what I'm going to do is share my screen now. I've actually got a GitHub repo um, with some of um, my examples. So please um, go along here. It's OJ Hughes um, to bring live um, JSON it. So in the readme, I'll just put a few um, little examples here, really. So um, the idea behind JSON, it first came out of Google, and um, the the idea was to um, instead of this idea of uh, templating a string file itself, what, what we do instead was we actually um, like have a it's really it's an external um, domain specific language, and the idea is that um, what you can do is actually define your the kind of the, the data that you want as um, uh, in a sort of JSON it format, and it look and it is a sub so, um, okay, uh, set of JSON. Um, so it's uh, it is valid JSON, but um, the, the, what the really sort of powerful sort of bit is is that actually what it lets you do is um, kind of have a centralized, unifying way of defining defining um, configuration and having shared data. So then you can um, actually kind of have a share. Say, for example, you might have IP address that gets used in um, different uh, file formats, um, you can reuse that same sort of bit of data and actually output using this JSON format. You can output to say YAML, or you can output to um, a Kubernetes manifest, um, a Spring application properties, and I'll actually show. I'll do some examples of what that actually. Um, actually, looks like. Have a quick drink quickly. So some links that you might want to also, if you're interested in learning a bit more. Um, so, of course, my Twitter, if you want to follow me, that's the one important one. But also, um, we've got um, the JSON at Style Guide, um, Databricks, um, the company who uh, do the Apache Spark um, distribution. They're a really big uh, user of JSON it, and they've got um, they've, they've created the Style Guide here, which um definitely sort of uh, recommend oh, bad link. But yes, yeah, so it's really good to have a look through that. And also Grafana. So Grafana is a um, piece of software that is um, used for uh, drawing graphs and displaying metrics in a visualization. And they, again, have adopted JSON in a big way. And because what it, what you can do with Profano, you can um, define charts um, in a sort of a declarative way. So this lets you, um, they've used JSON it to uh, let chart authors actually distribute, distribute their charts. So I think um, the JSON it certainly isn't a panacea. And when I have shown it to colleagues in the past, the kind of feedback I got um, was really that it doesn't look very particularly nice. I'll quickly just open up my um, IntelliJ. You kind of end up, you do end up with things that, that do look a little bit. Um, so it's kind of this, um, what it actually looks like itself. It's really, I kind of think of it as sort of if you, if Python and JavaScript had a marriage, it would, you know, end up looking looking um, something like this. So I think um, you kind of get used to it after a while. Um, what, what's good about it is, um, although it, um, it's declarative, okay, so it does let you do some things like um, it lets you it has some standard functions, it lets you define variables and things, but ultimately is a like a, a declarative language. Um, so um, it, you can't kind of if you if you're trying to kind of create configuration files using just Java, for example. And you know you can do all kinds of, um, there's not many guardrails, but JSON, it gives you this nice guardrails. It's, it's an external um, ESL as well. So it's, um, it doesn't depend on any other sort of runtime or, or anything like that. So um, there's, the, one of the other sort of really powerful um, features of JSON is it, it has a very good sort of merge semantics. So um, if you want to include, um, sort of different data from different files and um, do that um, 
really well. So um, that that comes quite useful if you are having kind of mixed in functionality. So you might have, say, you have like a, a little block of configuration. You actually want to put that in different places. That's where the merging um, it, it is really really useful. Um, I think before I kind of I might come back to pros and cons. What I do actually want to do now is just to go um, through for some of the examples. Firstly, I just wanted to look at um, how you can have different output formats in JSON. Okay. So what we've got here, what we're looking at is we've got, I've just declared some random sort of data here. So I've got just project names, just sort of um, some sort of information that we're going to um, use. So let's say we just want to put that data um, into a, just a string format. Okay, so um, I open up my terminal. So JSON itself is actually a a, a a command line tool, so you can install it. I've got, actually got some links to the different um, tools there, but um, you'd be able to um, just follow that those instructions, and install it quite easily. So if you've got a Mac, you just use some um, sort of brew um, import. So you can see here, all it's done is actually outputted a string. Um, it's not very exciting, but hopefully, I can we can kind of build on this. Um, if I use this minus s, yeah, then then you kind of have so the actually snapshot there, that word snapshot, that is the variable that's been embedded into the uh, thing there. Um, so built prefix, so I could change that to uh, I think project name. Yeah, so now let's change to Spring Microservice. So that's kind of cool, but actually let's do something a little bit more interesting. So as Spring developers, I'm sure we're all quite. Um, fond of application.properties files and um, defining our spring configuration properties. So I've got an example here, actually, what we've got. Um, I've built up an array. So this is where it's very similar to sort of, kind of Python, really, where you can define um, an array just like that. I really want to um, format that a bit better. So um, but this array here. And I've, what I've done, I've just, again, I'm importing this um, dev data, um, this JSON file here. And um, that means I can just use those um, as they're kind of basically importing a lot of their variables. And then I can actually just build, I'm using, so I declared an array, and then for each item in the array, I'm actually just formatting a string, and I'm building it up into this like properties format, just using um, standard kind of string formatting notation for each line. And then what I do at the bottom, where you see STD, this is just like a standard lib of JSON. It you can actually go on the JSON uh, website here, and you have, this tells you all the different um, parts of the standard lib here. So there you go. Do this again. So again, do the uh, JSON it command line. Oh, but this time let's do properties. Yeah, and here we go. So again, we've actually just got a um, a different out using the same sort of data, the same kind of unified way of describing that configuration. We've got um, a completely customizable output. Go back to our read. Where we are. So I think what I want to do is actually kind of build up a slightly um, bigger example. So if we go um, to, I'll go again. Um, so what I want to do, let's say this is just something I made up. Let's say for all of our projects, we have to um, define this kind of um, standard um, like uh, manifest that describes the metadata of our build. And we just have that um, defined for all of our projects. So. Um, instead of having to kind of manually hard code it, this is where JSON it can be um, used be used really easily. So let's have a look at the files I've already got here. Um, build meta got JSON it. So this is if you can imagine like you had multiple teams, they all want to um, actually um, impl have the same configuration file. They could um, they would just basically implement this. If, if in Java, this is really like. Um, a new kind of so this is like a constructor uh, call um, for new app metadata here, and I'm just populating it with um, the the fields for that, and then my config at the bottom is actually just outputting the kind of final um, actual JSON. So let's go and have a look at um, there's actually an IntelliJ plugin for um, JSON as well. So you can see I do get some quite simple um, to actually get some sort of context navigation here. But this is where things get a little bit messy. I'll talk for it the best I can. But the way um, this is kind of like a, a class really in JSON. So what we've got, um, we've actually declared this is what our kind of constructor looks like. Um, and at the bottom here, where we've got app meta, this is what the actual um, output is going to be for this class. So this describes the kind of output format here. Um, 
and you can see here you can do things like ref this is where you've got dollar dot app meta that's actually a uh, reference like a back tick kind of thing so it actually references um so at least numbers actually a self-reference there so um you can basically build it up that way so and another cool thing i've done here 